We want to continue our finances in marriage, which has been a bane of many marriages. Let's get into the Word of God. Your life will never be the same. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! One more! Will you say this is my Bible? It is the word of God. It has the power to change my life. And to give me an inheritance. Amongst all the saints. I'm not a hearer only. But I'm a doer of the word. Wave your Bible after me. And shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Everybody sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty, mighty, mighty. Find some more. Kesi, kesi, Emma, Eradi.
powerful, powerful song ministration by the choir. Oh, you can do it better Oh, you can do it better than Amen. Amen. We want to also welcome Mama and the Women's Fellowship. They are a successful program in Kumasi. The Women's Convention was awesome. Amen. Amen. I was privileged to partake of the Friday night. Awesome, awesome time in the presence of the Lord. But last week we started a series on finances in marriage. And we established that for most of the problems in marriage is that brings divorce financial problems account for majority. and so we began to look at some of the streams of income and we established that most self-made millionaires and billionaires have multiple streams of income and that 65% of millionaires and billionaires have at least three streams of income. And that 45% have at least four streams. And 29% have five streams or more. And have we read from Ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 12. Yeah, efi aye osenka for eti duba kuno imu dumienu imu mienu imu mienu. In the NIV, ewo NIV. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. Aye osenka for eti duba kuno imu mienu. It says, invest in seven ventures. I say na. Yes, in eight. You, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So we concluded by my just enumerating seven streams of income. Lift up one hand as a sign of surrender. Heavenly Father, it's time to declare your word. I ask that you grant me utterance and make me a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name. And will the saints say amen. And so the seven streams of income we said were number one, and income. From that is from your primary job, which is the common and traditional form of income for most people. That is either you are self-employed or you are employed by somebody. And that basically takes care of your basic needs. Your tithes, your offerings, your health insurance, your social security, your basic utilities like electricity, water, garbage, your bola garbage, your data or your transportation. And, and then number two, your business income. And then number Number three, your capital gains. Income, which has to do with the sale of your assets. Number number four. Your interest income. That is the interest on your savings accounts. 
Se odi sika akoto sika krabia na eso aba onfaso. Your treasury bills. Anasa odi ato treasury bills. Your bonds. Anasa abai di abai eto. And then number five, your dividend income. Ena di eto su enum enso ye di ode onsa ayo a eno su bruise. That is profit on your shares and your crypto. And Or your rental income that is owning a property and getting money from it. And number seven, your royalty. Sale of your music or books, etc. Now the truth of the matter is building multiple streams of income is the key to achieving your long-term wealth. It increases your cash flow and builds your wealth. And it reduces your dependence on one source of income. So if your main source of income dries up, you have something to fall on. So what it does is that it stops you from living from paycheck to paycheck or from your salary to the next. So amongst the seven streams of income, I'm going to funtum it and give you about 22 ways of doing it. Not in any regular order. So, number one, your regular income. Number two, spousal income. Or from the work of your spouse. Now, why I say spousal income is because, I mean, if you had two thousand and that was all your income, and at the end of the month, your 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 spouse also helps to fill in the the, the blanks. She goes to buy something, and instead of your chop money, she adds some. That is spousal income which is helping you. And so you can also start a shop or a store by starting a table and it becomes a shop by having an IT company which is number four number five by writing an e-book and recently a pastor and his son came to see me and I've known this pastor for so many years and once a while he will come with some penye offering for me and this is a son who is 21 years old came with the father and said Archbishop I want to bless you I said where did, I mean, where did you get the money he said I write ebooks I've written five of them he said that I'm making money out of it and Charlie the small envelope he gave me was like about three years of what his father has been giving him. All, all, all I'm trying to say is that he was making money out of the e-book. Number six is to teach an extra class or workshop. About something you are an expert in. So you can be a visiting lecturer or something, or you are good in something, you can offer your services at a fee. 
and see over to me, Ako, Ako, a yes, baby, I a tried there, so only be which I wish me a call, Ako tried there, no one yaska crab. Number seven is rent income. Yeah, a thousand song, a yes, sir, what would Japa dear be now the Emma High? Buy a land, or talk as I said, put up a small boy's cottage on it if you are not even ready to build. Was it a dime church of poor? We were so, so only a crowd of so we sit down, Cassian. And recently, there's you know, somebody I know who built a boy's cottage on a land. And whilst he was building, the contractor said people started coming to him and asking to rent the building. There are many people who need a place to stay. And so, you must get a land. You must build something. You need rental income. Give me a believing amen. In fact, it is believed one of the areas where you never lose. No custom say is, is to have an asset. Or real estate. Amen. Amen. Number eight. Babysitting. In, the, in these days, many parents want help. You will be amazed because of that help. Many parents take their children to school when they are one year old. So that it will free them up. Now, Saturday. You can you can you can talk to some of the uh, of the mothers and say I can take care of your child for so and so amount so that they can go to their funeral they can go to their wedding they can go somewhere even after church on Sunday you can do that for somebody at a fee. Number nine, making cakes or selling cookies. When we were young, in, in school, school, some of the people used to sell kati cake. cake. And some of them used to sell kube cake. All you need to do to do in kati cake is to buy granules, get some cubes of sugar. When you, when you put a silver bowl on fire and, and you drop the sugar in it, it will melt. When you pour the granules in it and it dries up a bit you get your nkati cake amen amen <laughs> some of you are some of you guys are looking at me how did he learn it you, you get the hard coconut and you get the sieve I don't mean the net one. Uh-huh. Then you, now you chew the coconut. <laughs> you grind it. Then when, you you the, it you when you put the sugar on fire, now the and you put in the grated coconut. Now you get your coconut cake. Now when you <laughs> cake, you know. give the Lord praise. And when we were in school, man, in old school, no. We used to sell some of these things amongst even the students. Number ten. Raising livestock. It is believed that the oldest investment strategy is raising livestock. Rearing sheep, goats, fowls. These days, many people don't like too much of the poultry farm. Chicken. They want house chicken. 
They're taking that Rome's free reign. Eating ants. And, oh, those ones, their bones are hallelujah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey, if you are clapping, do it. Well. <laughs> Or you can do rabbitry. You can have rabbits. My dad, my dad used to rear goats and sheep. Uh, 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 and and turkeys. And then also rabbits. And rabbits they multiply like that. And then you can sell them. Or you can. These days, people have grass cutter farms. And yesterday, I even learned that. I, I even learned a new one, which is snail farming. Amen? Amen. So, all these to generate income for you. Number 11, to mow the loans for people. You go to weed, you go to weed the lawns of people. Amen. Amen. There are so many people who have their self-contained and in front there, there's some grass or some, some things there. You can help them to weed or you buy a mower and you go to the place and you help them at a fee. Number 12, gardening, gardening or vegetable sales. When we were growing up, a champion organized a coup to overthrow Buzia. And they placed sanctions on him. So he encouraged all Ghanaians to do operation feed yourself. So everybody had a small garden in your compound. Now, we got to a time in Ghana recently when you buy lettuce, you don't even know where it's coming from because some of the lettuce they use gutter water to water it. So mama began to grow vegetables in the corner of the house. So that she can have her own vegetables. And and it was yeah if you are clapping do it well. It was so good that there were times she would give some out to people. So you can you can make them and sell them. If you are a pastor, so preaching appointments. But if you are a pastor and you are taking preaching appointments, make sure your Sunday. If you don't have a very strong associate, you don't miss your Sundays. So Otherwise, you don't miss your Sundays. For so many years, I can count the number of Sundays I miss a year in church. Amen. Amen. Number 14. You, number 14, you can do freelance editing or proof, proofreading of books. When I write my books, I, I, I take them for proofreading. And in Ghana here, yeah, they charge you. Amen. Amen. And some of you, your English is good. Move on, Your written English and your spoken English is good. They are They are Edit materials for people and charge a fee. I don't mean where if you yourself when you are, when you are speaking the English is was incoming. 
If you are saying it was in coming, you are, what are you going to edit? It was in coming, I dare and I woke up. Amen. When I was doing my boy Charles, apart from editing it locally, I had to take it overseas for proofreading. And hey, because it's a big book. It was Kumi Preko. <laughs> but I had to pay. Because if you want it at a certain standard, you've got to pay. Some of you, you can you can choose to edit the thesis of people and charge a fee. In fact, I met somebody who says she writes theses for people. People writing their, people writing their masters. And doctorate, she'll take the contract and do all the research for you. At the fee. And you will fill in the personal things you must fill in. Number 15. Translation and interpretation. Translation into it, into French, into English, into Spanish. If you have all those language skills, don't, don't keep it and use it to be eating kenke and fish alone. Use it. Let it bring you streams of income. Number 16. Helping people with interior decoration. There are some of you when you enter a room, you can tell that the decoration is bad. It's a talent you have. Do it, use it for a fee. There is a, there is a sister in the church. Serious interior decorator. I mean, she will give you the 3D design. And before she comes to do it. Amen. Amen. Some of you have giftings like that. Let it bring you streams of income. Event organize 17. Event organization. Weddings, funerals, parties. Some of you are gifted in doing that. You don't have to start big. You can start with having 50 chairs. And going to people and saying, if you want this function, I can set it up for you. Start at a point. And let it bring some money to you. Number 18, taking pictures. And videoing. Amen. Amen. You take pictures and people like it. Have you considered to do it charging money for it? When you use your phone to take videos, people are excited. You hear all you use it for is TikTok. And Instagram. And even that one, you are not commercializing it. Do you know some people make money from TikTok and Instagram? And YouTube. YouTube. You know these days some people do binge watching. Where like I said some things recently. And then some people will take me talking. Now then they'll put themselves at their side and be watching and because my matters trend they will be trending and while they are trending they are getting money 
There are times some of the people that you see them talk rubbish on YouTube and TikTok. The more they trend, they are paid for it. I'm not saying go and do crazy stuff like that. But they take advantage. Some of them, they don't, they won't say anything. They'll just put you what you said and they will be watching. And then, multiple streams. Number 19. Painting. Some of you are good painters. But you've only been painting your house and the houses of your relatives. If you are good in painting, when somebody is finishing their house, go and, go and ask them how much they are going to pay for painting. And when they tell you reduce it, small, and do it for them for a fee. Amen. Twenty. Helping to carry concrete when they are building. Twenty-one. Delivery of goods. You want to help in the delivery of goods. 22 shopping for people. There are people that would like it if you can go and shop for them. For a fee. And many, many other things. But you must get multiple streams of income. They don't have to be big, big money. But it is better to have something coming than nothing at all. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4. It says don't observe the wind. Or see. Don't that means the wind can be bad. What it means is that if you are if it's investment, there are times you have to take risks. There will be adversities or risks. You may lose. I remember I encouraged Mama. For us to do some investment, me. Then the investment went bad. And she said I should pay her money. Because I made her do the investment. So I said, from now. Me, I won't lead her into any investment. Because when you invest, you can lose. <laughs> and, and that's why at times it is better if your family and your friends don't know the risks you are taking. Only let them know the results. But you should be willing to take risks. If I tell you some of the investments I have lost. But I can also tell you of some of the investments that I have profited from. So you lose some, you win some. Give him Give him thanks. Give him praise. Einstein, the one who invented the light bulb, Einstein, yeah. in trying to do that, he failed 9,999 times. <laughs> he, <laughs> he found out what did not work. And when he did, he moved on to the next option. So when you discover what does not work, don't grieve on it. Just move on to the next one. Give me an amen. Now, that one I was adding to last week. Today, I want to quickly talk about some money problems that can lead to divorce. Or five money problems that can lead to divorce. 
Number one is when one or both spouses spend secretly. They spend Amen. Amen. Some couples are not open in their in their spending. Well, if you're a woman, or if whatever, woman or man, if you're a lady and you want to buy a wig, you don't need to inform your husband. You want to buy cuteness, makeup, a dress you like. But when you want to buy a land, you don't need his permission or her permission. You, you don't need his permission or her permission. But you, but you need to inform them. Amen. Amen. It is very important. I know a couple I know a couple who divorced me me nim eh awarefobia o ja aware because the wife bought a nice car heavy one expensive it says o ba no eto e shan na ne bo din ye and went and kept it somewhere and o dey call see baby and the man did not know na ni kunu nim when the man found out me o kunu ni hu ye no he got so annoyed ni bu fu ye they divorced and na dey aware ja e because trust was broken Amen. Amen. Don't be lying about your spending. Now, if you notice that your spouse is lying about their spending, confront them in a non-combative way. Amen. Amen. And if you are not confident that you can keep your cool during a discussion, then seek somebody, seek the help of an objective pastor or an objective therapist. I said an objective pastor because some pastors are very subjective. Amen. They are no, they are subjective. They they don't look at things objectively. Amen. Amen. So if you are concealing or lying about purchases, you need to end it now. Amen. Amen. If the temptation arises, then so heavy ever. Ask for yourself why you feel the need to not disclose the information. Because it could bring problems. Number two. Some husbands cannot handle their wives making more money. In 2020, in the USA, 21% of women said they made more money than their spouse. And 26% said they made the same amount with their husbands. Even in Ghana, the salaries of women have changed. And the way things are going, women are gradually earning more salaries than men. Because more women are going to more graduate schools now. Because for, for most men, once they get their first degree or they, they learn some apprenticeship, they want to work and take care of the family. But some of the women are able to do their masters, do their doctorate. 
Nanso e mani bi onu obe kwa konani ma kwa ni masters no aye ni kuni ni anata ni doctor And so many women are now earning a lot Enti e mani be bre onu mu a omunye sika be bre And some of them are earning more than the more than the men they are marrying Na be bre so enya sika na so omu jacket ya e sene won kru no a ware onu Na if you are a woman like that you must understand how to navigate this thing Se o ya oba na te se o sa o te ase e kwa obe fa so Because in Ghana we are going to have more of that. Sanse wo my Ghana mu ye benya ma bebre. We are going to have bank managers marrying cashiers. Ah ye be hu se we men bank managers marrying cashiers. Eh ya bank manager obe ware de ojiji. I mean women parliamentarians and cabinet ministers marrying uh, drivers. E ma mra she be jwafo anase asuafo a omo e ware e ma. Because that is how much our system is changing. Sanse sa e na ye man no e se sacro. Now some men struggle emotionally to accept the fact that their wife will earn more than them. Ma be bre o no ma o di a pray o atin kan mu se won yire no benye sika sen won. Because historically men have have been the breadwinners. E san sa ba ko sen mu no e ma ma e na wo hwe fie. And some women don't help matters at all. Na ma bi o so a wo mwa no matter how much they end they'll say that as for me if my husband is taking care of me then i feel better am fa ho sika ho je no se me die se me kunu e hwe me a na me hu se me ho ato me that statement is enough to make the man coil and feel intimidated sa asam no sa o ka e ma be ma no oboto amen amen and so if you are a woman any more than your husband you should understand the dynamics there are some women who earn four times the salary of their husband then what you have to do is agree and have a joint account where if the man is earning a thousand you say okay you put 800 there or something and i will put 2000 there or 3000 I watched a video of a Chinese man and the wife who went to uh, a restaurant. They invited their friends. No, they were now for four quarters. And after eating, the woman saw that the husband kept counting the money. Counted it the first time, counted it the second time. And a lot of the times when the money is not enough, you count it high, you think that some is missing. So when the woman noticed that, in her, when they were going out, she, she took a fat envelope in her purse. She just took the envelope under the table and gave it to the husband and the man began to count the thing as if he it is their money give the Lord yeah. praise that woman understood how to handle things amen amen so if you are married if you are a married man who struggles to accept your wife making more money than you talk to her about your feelings and find ways to for her to not continually make you lose your self confidence but it, i mean Probably the woman is the one who pays the children's school fees. And anytime there's some small misunderstanding, this house, I have become the man in the house. No. There be your husband will feel somehow. Number three, couples living beyond their means. When couples, when couples live beyond their means, they fuel anxiety. Don't overspend. 
and especially in the offices there is the tendency for them to bring things for you to you know they say oh take it and pay later when we got married they brought something like that for mama and I said what I mean I can't stand is debt so you are not going to take it we are going to only buy those things when we have the money and so we agreed and so we don't buy on credit clothes and those things no give the Lord praise and so that anxiety has not been there for us it can be very problematic some couples the man will be I, I, I know this case of a couple where the man was in charge of the woman's account. He used all the money in the account to buy to buy something he claimed he was investing in. Without, without even telling the woman. In the end, the investment went bad. When the woman found out all she had worked for was gone. That is wrong. Amen. Amen. I don't encourage men to be in charge of their wives. Amen. 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 But don't keep overspending. It will hurt your marriage. Debt puts you in anxiety. If you are in debt, have a plan. Get, get my book, Money in Your Pocket. Creating Wealth God's Way. There I, I teach on how to overcome debt. Or how to pay your debts. You, you need to make a list of all the people you are owing. Sit with your spouse. Sit with your spouse. And the two of you agree on all the people you are owing. And agree on a payment plan. How are you going to pay off all these people? What will you pay every month? If you are giving yourself three months, six months, one year, two years, have a payment plan. And come out from under the debt. If you are here with me, give me a believing amen. Number four. The fourth problem in, ma- in marriages concerning finances is couples arguing about money. Spousal arguments about money are the leading pred- predictor of divorce. And somebody said, Financial issues lend themselves to more frequent or intense arguments. Because money is usually not a subject that couples are that upfront. Honest or proactive about discussing. And it can lead to blow-ups down the road. So you must discuss money matters. In the marriage. You must discuss it. After 38 years of marriage. We still have this situation. Well, mama will say, let's buy this. Ah, mama, because I am too weak. And as a man, my first reaction. Now, so Obama, the American, he said, how much will it cost? Everything. For me, once you say, let's buy this. Media, mama, because I am too weak. Even in the office, is the same thing. Well, my office, I'm not here. 
If you tell me we are buying something and I don't have an invoice, I can't tell you whether I agree or not. Earlier on in our marriage, when that came up, and I said, where is the invoice? Mama's first reaction would be, do you think I want to chop your money? And you think I want to steal your money? No. You, are, you don't want to steal my money, but I want to know how much it will cost. The men, do you, still, do you also have that situation? Are we in the, are we in the same boat? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so it's not that I don't want to give the money, but I want to know how much. So with time we got to understand one another. And it's easier. Still today she will still forget that the invoice must come first. <laughs> Amen. 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 But we don't fight over it. Earlier on we used to. <laughs> because we didn't understand. So it's very important to have frank discussions about money. And when your temperature is rising, cool down. Improve your communication habits around money. And address any issues head on to prevent arguments. And, and you must do it sooner than later. There are, there are many couples have, haven't been a pastor for 40 years. There are many couples when they have something they need to discuss, they will sweep it under the carpet. Because some are very sensitive. Hell, stop, 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 stop. This one, I don't want to touch it. I don't want us to touch it. Both men and women. Some are like that. No. It must be dealt with. If you don't deal with it today, tomorrow, it will come and hurt you. So you must deal with the issue. So there are many marriages where they have piled the debt under the carpet. Uh, that the carpet has become a mountain. When it becomes a mountain, when the wind blows the carpet, everybody will see what is under the carpet. So deal with the issues that must be dealt with. Discuss it objectively. Number five. Couples having different spending habits or priorities. And this is where I will suggest that Couples should have their own money. You have your own money and you have a joint account. The joint account must be an agreement where we say we are all putting money there. One party can put in more depending on what you earn. And that joint account, when it's being spent, both must know what the money was used for. A lot of men are cheats. So they control the joint account. And they can spend it anyhow. But when the woman wants to spend some, they want to know. No, once it's both of you, your joint account, you all must know. And then you must have your personal accounts too. So that if you're a man and you want to buy something for your mother, you don't need permission from your wife. If a wife wants to buy something for the father, she doesn't need permission from the husband. Because a lot of the times there's this challenge where couples feel that 
and uh, the, the man is using his money to take care of his relatives if he has put some in the joint account and he's using some to take care of his relatives give him peace let him do it it will give you peace in your marriage <laughs> So if you want to spend, if you the man you want to spend on your mother, you don't have a problem. If the woman wants to spend some money on the father, she doesn't need your permission. Give me a believing amen. amen. It is very important to bring peace to the family. Amen. Amen. So each spouse should contribute to the joint account. And decide how much gets allocated to this joint account. And leave the rest for the other party. In conclusion, quickly, number one, married couples should not be spending secretly on big purchases. Amen. If, you are, if you are buying big purchases, your spouse must know. Number two, husbands must be comfortable with wives making more money. Number three, Couples should not live beyond their means. So your cloth according to the material you have. Let me go over one to three. Married couples should not be spending secretly on big purchases. Your, pa- your partner must know big purchases. Number two, husbands must be comfortable with wives making more money. Number three, couples should not live beyond their means. Number four, have an ongoing discussion about money. Number five. Keep some finances separate. And have a joint account. May God bless his word in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Have you been blessed? Oh, give the Lord a better clap. Recently, I was in Congo Brazzaville, and last week I showed you excerpts of day one. And today I'll give you some excerpts of day two. And then I'll pray for you if you are sick. Amen. Amen. So if my TV people are ready. Can we go to Congo Brazzaville? Congo Brazzaville. If you are here with me tonight, and you want to say, Archbishop, I want you to pray with me. I want my sins forgiven. Je veux mes péchés pardonnés. And I want to de- receive this Jesus you are talking about. Et je veux recevoir ce Jésus dont tu parles. If you are like that, lift up one hand. Heavenly Father, I commit these ones to you. Père Éternel, je te les recommande. I pray they will know you and know you better. Je prie qu'ils puissent apprendre à te connaître, te connaître, Satan mieux te connaître. Your hold over their lives. Satan libère leur vie. And I ask that they be set free. Et je demande qu'ils soient libérés. Anybody with any point of contact of the devil. 
toute personne avec un point de contact du diable. I ask that that point of contact will be broken in their lives. Je demande que ce point de contact soit brisé dans leur vie. They will be set free to serve Almighty God. Qu'ils soient libres pour te servir, oh Seigneur. In Jesus' name. Au nom de Jésus. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh church, put your hands together to the Lord. Église, on acclame pour le Seigneur. If you came and you couldn't walk and you came with a stick or crutches, lift it up and begin to walk. Si vous êtes venu ici avec une béquille et que vous pouviez pas marcher sans cette béquille, s'il vous plaît, levez-la. Whatever you couldn't do, do it now. Faites-le maintenant. Whatever you couldn't do, do it now. Faites-le maintenant. There's a miracle there. Il y a un miracle là-bas. There's a miracle there. Il y a un miracle là-bas. There's a miracle there. Il y a un miracle là-bas. There's a miracle there. Il y a un miracle là-bas. Whatever you couldn't do. La puissance de Dieu est présente pour guérir. La présence de Dieu est présente pour guérir. Daddy, mama here for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Maman ici pendant 18 ans. She was, she was paralyzed. Elle mama, était paralysée. Which one is your mama, show me how you came. Maman, montrez-nous comment vous êtes arrivé quand vous veniez. That's how she used to walk. C'est comme ça qu'elle marchait auparavant. This is how Mama used to walk. C'est comme ça que Maman marchait Now, auparavant. Mama, give me your stick. Maman, donnez-moi vos béquilles, s'il vous plaît. Mama, give me your stick. Donnez-moi vos béquilles. And Mama, let's go here. Maman, marchez maintenant. Marchez Mama, maintenant. Let's go. Marchez. Mama, let's go. Marchez. Eighteen Mama, years. marchez. Dix-huit ans. Eighteen years. Dix-huit ans. Who came with Mama? Qui est venu avec Maman? Who came with Mama? Qui est venu avec Maman? You came with Mama. C'est ma grand-mère. Ça yes. fait 18 ans. Est-ce que Are vous êtes content? Je suis très content. Marcher avec, grand avec la grand-mère. Ça fait 18 ans. 18 ans. La puissance de Dieu. Qu'est-ce qui n'allait pas avec vous? Euh, il, y a une, enfin, il y a un mois déjà, on m'a diagnostiqué une ostéonécrose. Ça veut dire que les os de mes, de mes hanches et de mon fémur se, se cassent parce que le, le tissu qu'il y avait so he had osteon he was diagnosed of osteonecrosis mm -hmm. I believe that's the death of the bones okay. and so in his hip and uh, in his thigh the femur mm -hmm. j'étais censé me faire opérer he was supposed to be operated on et j'avais des mouvements que je pouvais pas faire je suis obligé de marcher avec des béquilles so he had to walk with the crutches so without the crutches he can't walk so, si je pouvais marcher, mais j'avais j'avais du mal après, ça me faisait mal. But it was very painful for him to walk. So, and you show me how he came. Comment? So, show me how he came. comment vous êtes venu. This is how he came. C'est comme ça qu'il est arrivé. This is how he came. C'est comme ça qu'il est arrivé. Now lift up your stick. Maintenant levez vos pieds. Lift up your crutches. Lift them up. Levez. And now let's walk. Marchons maintenant. Let's walk. Marchons. Let's walk. Marchons. The power Marchons. of the Lord. La puissance de Dieu. Lift it up like this. Yes. Let's Marchez go. maintenant. The power of La the puissance Lord. de Dieu. The power of La the puissance Lord. de Dieu. Lift it up. Levez les béquilles. Levez les béquilles. Marchez, marchez. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Donnez au Seigneur une meilleure offrande d'acclamation. Est-ce que tu es content? Say thank you, Jesus. Merci, Jésus. Father. Père, I, I pray that his bones will be strong. Je déclare que ses os seront fortifiés. In Jesus' name. Au nom de Jésus. Amen. This gentleman, for over one month, he had a hernia. Mm. Ça fait un mois que ce monsieur jeune homme a une hernie. On the right side of his body. Mm -hmm. À le côté droit de son corps. And in fact, this is the medical, medical report. Medical report and prescription for him. Mm -hmm. Ça c'est le diagnostic médical et la prescription aussi médicale. But immediately after prayer. Mais immédiatement après la prière. The hernia has vanished. La hernie a disparu. Are you happy? And, and now he can lift his leg. Content? Give the Lord a Acclame praise. pour Jésus. Daddy, for 18 years, this gentleman had pain in his limbs. Mm -hmm. The pain was so intense that he couldn't. He, anytime he's walking, he has intense pain. But for now, after the prayer, he's able to walk without the pain. pain. Ça fait 18 ans qu'il a les douleurs aiguës au niveau de ses cuisses et les douleurs ont disparu. This man for two years was completely blind. Mm -hmm. Cet homme, ça fait deux ans qu'il est tout à This is his wife who came with him. Ça c'est wow. sa femme qui est venue But avec after lui. After prayer, his eyes have opened. Après la prière, ses yeux se sont ouverts. Okay. 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 Attendez, 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 attendez. Do what I'm doing. 
Faites ce que je fais. Do what I'm doing. Faites ce que je fais. Oh, Faites ce que je fais. Touch my nose. Touchez mon nez. Touchez mon nez. Mon nez. Mon nez. My nose. Yes. Oh, Alléluia. Daddy, follow me and touch my handkerchief. Papa, suivez-moi et attrapez mon mouchoir. Touch my handkerchief. Touchez no. mon mouchoir. Follow me. Attrapez. Follow. Arrachez moi mon mouchoir. Touch it. Arrachez. Touch Arrachez. It. Arrachez. Suivez-moi. 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 Hey! Est-ce qu'on peut clamer pour Jésus? He see my tie. He said it's a red tie. Il voit ma 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 cravate et uh -huh. elle est rouge. It's a blouse. Plus uh, it's a white petit de mes tailles. And he says I have a metal here. Oh, give the Lord praise. Acclamez pour Jésus. Let me listen to Mama. Mama, are you happy? Mama, est-ce que tu es contente? Très bien. I'm very happy. Mama, so when you were coming, how did you you were holding his hand? Maman, quand vous êtes arrivé, comment est-ce que vous attrapiez papa? Je eh? l'accompagnais. Comment? Il faut nous montrer. You ça held his hand. Comment? Comme now. ça. Comme okay, ça. that's how you held his hand. Il ne pouvait pas marcher comme ça. Now, so now what I want you to do is where were you sitting? Où est-ce que vous étiez assis? Back there. Derrière, derrière là-bas. Okay, mama, I want you to take the lead. Je voudrais que vous vous mettez devant. And papa, follow him. papa va vous suivre simplement. Papa, follow maman. Allez, papa, suivez maman. Mama go. Allez-y. Allez allez Mama go. Allez-y. Mama go. Mama allez-y. Mama allez-y. Acclamez pour Jésus. Un chant de louange. Alléluia. My declare. Fan sembo que si on veut rade. If you are sick in any part of your body. So you are a one if I do not have a stand. Sick in any part of your body, will you stand? I want to pray for you. We are only if I do not have a baby. Sorry, you know, the power of the Lord is present to heal. Nyame, it to me, I was a best. Lift up one hand, lay the other hand where you are hurting. Be down, Sabako, Nafan, Sabako, Etu, baby, a yo, ya, Heavenly Father, Osreja. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, yes, Christ of Nazareth. I commit your people into your hands. May they uncross for Shaun, sir. Satan, you know me, you would obey me. Satan, you know me, now wait to me. Because I don't come in my name. I come in the name of Jesus. That overcame you almost 2,000 years ago. And I bind every spirit of eye problem. Every spirit of eye problem and ear problem. Every spirit of heart problem. Every spirit of kidney problem. Liver problem. Every spirit of cancer be bound in the name of Jesus. And come out right now. And right now I command healing into your body. From the crown of your head. Free you three so. To the soles of your feet. I ask that you be made every way to old. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Of Give it to Jesus. And take your seat. And bow down your head with me. Bow down your head with me. If you are here today. And you want your sins forgiven. Lift up one hand. I'm going to pray with you. You want God to forgive you your sins. Lift up one hand. You backslide it. You want to come back to the Lord. Lift up one hand. You have a bad habit. You want that habit to be destroyed. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift up one hand. If your hand is lifted. Will you please stand. If your hand is lifted. Please stand. I'm going to pray with you. If your hand is lifted, stand. Sorry. You want to be set free. Yes, from every evil habit. You want your sins forgiven. Will you take your Bible, your bag, your purse? And walk to me in front here. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. You want your sins forgiven. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse. For Bible, bag, no purse. Come to me in front here. I want to pray with you. You 
you want your sins forgiven. Yes, I want your body free. Yes, you want your sins forgiven. I yes, want your body free. You want your sins forgiven. Yes, I want your body free. Will you please lift up one hand? Lift up one hand. If you are watching me, will you also lift up one hand? If you are watching me, free, you also wait to me. Listening to me by radio, also lift up one hand. Who hear me? A year radio. Church, lift up one hand with me. I saw the page on Sabbath. And pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God, forgive me all my sins. For me, born in you now, free me. Lord Jesus, right, Jesus. You died for me. Ugu mami. You rose for me. Sorry, mami. Come into my life. Bra ma bra bom. Make my life a testimony. Mama bra bo nya dan si die. To those who know me. Ma wo wa eni me. Thank you, Lord. Eda wa se rade. For answered prayer. Sa we tie me bible. In Jesus name. Jesus name. Put your hand on your chest. Pa wo sa to ko ko. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father. Oh, sorry, Jack. I commit these precious ones to you. May they in Crawford's room queen bow and name. I pray they will know you and know you better. They will be established in you. Obe tin tin wo mu. I break every yoke of the enemy from their lives. Ebu bu oya boni fo ni ko ni afri wa abra. In Jesus name. Wa Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Church, will you please stand? Asa fo ba cho obe tin mi a sorry. Will you please stand? Tell me to me I'm sorry. And if today is your first day worshiping with us, any day any kaya only here somewhere. Will you take your Bible, your bag, your purse? Come and join us in front here. For our Bible bag, I know. And join us in front here. Na be kaya ho eni moha. Today is your first day worshiping with us. And any day any kaya only here somewhere. Take your Bible, your bag, your purse. For our Bible bag, no purse. Come and join us. Na be kaya ho. Amen. Amen. This is one of my classmates. We, I am a classmate. Now. Amen. Amen. Today is your first day worshiping with us. Amen. Amen. You see this dear lady on your left? Will you please follow her? We have some trained people who say a few things to the church. Put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. Awesome, awesome. Put your hands together for them. Oh, you can do it better than that. You can do it better than that. Put your hands together for them. Put your hands together for them. Bonsem Emao. Take your seats for a few minutes. We are going to take our second offering. And if you are watching me from overseas, you want to send your offering through send wave or world remit. Or tap tap send. And our tap tap send. And the name is Perez Chapel International. And the number is plus two three three. Two zero three one. Two zero three one. Six two zero eight four. Six two zero eight four. Plus two three three. Plus two three three. Two zero three one. Two zero three one. Six two zero eight four. Six two zero eight four. Or plus two three three. And a plus two three three. Two four three. Two four three. Five zero zero. Five zero zero. Six two four. Six two four. Plus two three three. Plus two three three. Two four three. Two four three. Five zero zero. Five zero zero. Six two four. Six two four. If you are in Ghana, so my Ghana, you want to send your offering to Star Eight Hundred Star One Thousand Hash. What do I for you? Star 800 Star 1000 Hash on all mobile networks. Mobile network Star 800 Star 1000 Hash. Star 800 Star or you can send to our hash. MTN Momo. Now we have MTN Momo. 0243 500 Two zero two zero eight four eight four. Or you can send it through our PayPal account. And now we to be our PayPal account and so. And the username is at the Perez Dome. And the email is perezdome at perezchapel.org. Email near perezdome at perezchapel.org. So you are in the dome, you want to give 200 Ghana CDs and above. So what them have now person must see their 
Come and drop it on the altar. 200 Ghana CDs and above. Drop it on the altar. 200 Ghana CDs and above. Drop it on the altar. 200 Ghana CDs and above. Drop it on the altar. 200 CDs. Hundred Ghana cities. Hundred Ghana cities. Jesus is you. Fifty Ghana cities. Fifty Ghana cities. Fifty Ghana cities. Ten Ghana cities, five Ghana cities, two Ghana cities, one Ghana city, any other amount I haven't called. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over this offering. We ask that you multiply the seed sown by your people. Give your people a financial harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if you are watching me by television, YouTube, or Facebook, or whatever means, Social media, on YouTube, and as I can be our first social media. On Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, there's hot prayer going on here. I lead prayer here with my pastors. Many months of for eating pie when you want to. And it's awesome, awesome, awesome. And Tuesday evenings, I have a teaching service. Now, a brother, then you wrestle me. And this Tuesday, I can't wait to minister to you. Now, a brother, then you wrestle you don't want to miss it join us this Tuesday God bless you can we have our electronic announcements hello family our founder and prelate of the Paris Dome Archbishop Charles Ajinasari and our mother Reverend Mrs. Vivian Ajinasari join us in welcoming you to the Paris Dome family we're overjoyed to have you with us today at Perez Dome, 
We aim to build a global family church that magnifies God and extends Christ's love to the world with the compassion of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Stay tuned for updates on upcoming events and news from all around the world. My name is Belinda Silasi Koko. Rima Time and Spiritual Buffet Service. Precious one, this Tuesday is our fifth Tuesday in the month of August. On the fifth Tuesday in August, we have a spiritual buffet. That means that we put all the prayer topics we pray in the month together. And on the Tuesdays, we pray all that. So on Tuesday, we pray for marriages, we pray for jobs, we pray for children, we pray. Oh, on uh, fifth Tuesday, we pray. Invite your friends and your family coming Tuesday from 6 p.m. and your life will never be the same. God will meet you at the point of your need. See you there. Precious one, I want to specially invite you to our service this and every Sunday at the Perez Dome, Jowlu Junction. The Bible says God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their distractions. I have a special word from God for you that will bring you healing, deliverance, and turn your life around completely. If you are sick, troubled, struggling in your finances, your job or your family, the power of God's word will set you free. So join me at the Perez Dome this and every Sunday. When you are light at the Jolu Junction, just ask for the Perez Dome or look out for this big church building. We have pastors and trained people who will help you. Our first service is at 6.30 a.m. and the second service is at 9 a.m. Get ready for your freedom. I'll be expecting you this Sunday. God bless you. There'll be free buses available to shuttle you from Jolu to Seiko, Jolu to La Paz and to Malam Junction, Jolu to Achimota and to Mile 7, Jolu to 37 to Medina. That's all we have for you today. Make sure to connect with us on Facebook, TikTok, YouTube and Instagram by searching for our handle at the Paris Dome. And don't forget to like, follow and engage with our content. Join us on Tuesday for our breakthrough service at 9 a.m. followed by the Rima Time and Spiritual Buffet service at 6 p.m. Until we meet again, this is Belinda Silasi Koko. Beloved, I hope you've been blessed by the service. But if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord, forgive me all my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Make my life a testimony to those who know me. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, I want to encourage you to attend a Bible-believing church close to you. If there is a Paris chapel in your community, you go see the pastor. Tell him the archbishop says you should come and see him. And your life will never be the same. But if you are sick in any part of your body, lay your hand where you are hurting. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that you stretch forth your healing hands and touch this dear viewer. Satan, you know me, you would obey me, for I don't come in my name. I come in that powerful and miraculous name of Jesus. And I take authority over every spirit of eye problem, every spirit of ear problem, every spirit of back problem every spirit of neck problem and i command you to be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet and i ask that you be made every way to all your ears be healed your back be healed your neck be healed your spine be healed your hands be healed your kidney be healed the cancer dies at the roots and if you have a mental problem be set free right now in jesus name be loose from that depression by the power of the holy ghost and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you be able to exercise yourself and show people how God has met you at the point of your need. You will never be the same. And if you are believing for a marital breakthrough, put your hand on your forehead. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for those believing to get married. I pray for your intervention in their lives. And I also pray for those who are married and having challenges in the marriage. I pray that you help them with the insight and the foresight to make this relationship work in Jesus' name. And for any other person believing for any breakthrough whatsoever, I pray that you, the miracle-working God, will give them a testimony in Jesus' name. I call it done. Amen. Precious one, 
Join us same time next week, God willing, and your life will never be the same. Jesus loves you. I do with the love of God.